You welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily and it's now time to check some developmental works happening in our communities. Now we go all the way to the northeast region and this is because there is some good news happening in that area. Residents there are pretty much excited because um, some 12 communities in the Treponet district have been connected to the national grid. What does this mean to economic activities and the day-to-day -day, um, activities, you know, that go on in these communities? We have a report put together by our regional correspondent and we take a look at that. When we come back, we'll delve deeper into this story. Electricity has become an integral part of our lives and any community without power will obviously be impeded in its developmental efforts. This was the situation in some communities in the Cherpune district in the northeast region. The communities were without electricity and women especially were the most affected. Charging of mobile phones is also a big challenge as they also travel to other places with electricity to charge the phones. The Member of Parliament for Cherpune, Honorable Tahidu Abdul Razak, tells City News that during his campaign in 2020, the communities complained to him and he promised to get them connected to the national grid, which he has fulfilled. For now, 12 communities have been connected and this will definitely improve the living conditions of the residents. Abdul Razak outlined the importance of the electricity to the communities. This year we have about 12 communities that are to benefit from the rural electrification. This is the first community we have come to commence the rural electrification. This is Akobla number one. And from here we are going to number two, then Nandri and Penchi before we go to Angor. Yes, we have handed over and commenced the place. We have commenced the place and handed over to the community. But what I told them was that one, the importance of light. This light will help us educate our young ones who are upcoming. They can use this light for their extra classes or preps during the night. Also, our women who normally carry meals from the community to Cherokee town to mail will no longer do that. Our parents can now have access to cool water, chill water, as we are in the fasting of this Ramadan. Besides, uh, most of our people here will have to use this light religiously for other businesses. Because uh, for today, the Muslims can use it to start their charge prayers in the mosque. So that is one and two importance of electricity in a community. Some of the community members who spoke to City News were full of praise for the MP, saying their lives can now be improved as they will engage in other economic activities. Some of our women they are doing business, like they bought fridge down. They are going to use the fridge and uh, selling of drink and uh, pure water. So it's going to help us a lot. Thank you very much. Women say they will heave a side of relief as they will no longer travel long distances to go grind their flour, among others. Free, 
Some assembly members joined the residents in thanking the MP for the work done. With the coming on of the lights, uh, I can say that a lot of benefits have come. Because uh, women who are good in trading uh, can do sobolo or beer here and there, and then to sell during this fasting season. Aside that, uh, children who also go to school uh, will no longer have to struggle with the lighting system to learn during the night. And I also think security-wise is going to help us uh, because the customs immigration will pitch camp there uh, with the coming of the light on stream so that um, they will also go closer uh, as it will to safeguard our borders. And so with the coming of the light, it comes with a lot of benefits. So on this note, we are grateful to Nanado and his government and also our MP and uh, all the people around who made this thing possible. A chief in one of the communities expressed his gratitude to the MP for fulfilling his promise and urged his people to show more support for the MP to do more for them. We heard of light, it has kept long. And it's today, we are now having ours. So we thank you very much. Uh, our thanks go to our MP and then his staff. Uh, the work they have done. And we still, we still need more help from them. Really, light is good for the human being. And as we are pushing for 10 hours today, we are grateful. We thank for that. School children in the communities also express their happiness, saying their academic status can now be enhanced as they can now study at night. All right, and so this is how these communities in the Trepone district received um, the development, you know, that has come to them. Very, very welcoming news, yeah, David. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, because if in 2023, you know, mm. you don't have electricity, yeah. you can imagine how it's going to affect yeah. your, your, your lives, you yeah. know, and yeah. finally they have it. Yeah, I, I think that... Um, so, a number of things occurring to me about this issue. Uh, so, you look at and you say, okay, why are there still communities that are not connected to the mm. national grid, mm. right? But it's a cost-benefit analysis as a country. How many people live there? Um, how much... Because it costs to set up power yeah. in places, mm -hmm. right? So, when you're taking the power there, mm -hmm. you you have to ask yourself a lot of questions, right? Um, this power that we are sending to this area, how many people live there? What sort of economic value will it bring to us as a nation, mm -hmm. to them as a people? Yeah. You have to do all, all those mm -hmm. things, you know. But at the end of the day, I also feel that mm -hmm. there is that other aspect where we say, you know what, as a nation, mm -hmm. It's not only about economy, it's also about quality of life. Of course. And so everybody must have access mm -hmm. to electricity. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, as a nation, then we have to calculate it and ask ourselves at what cost, you know. And then we have to pay the price and say, you but know of what? Of course, we, we need to pay the price. Mm. I mean, regardless of whatever it's going to cost us, yeah. because once you've taken human beings there, once we know that some oh, Ghanaians live, live there, there. Yeah. you know, there are basic amenities yeah. that we need to provide them yeah. you know so what happens do we have hospitals in these areas do we have mm. schools there mm. once people go to the hospitals mm. how mm. are we even um, 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 you know storing some of our medication mm. how mm. are we doing all these kind of things yeah. the students there does that mean that from Once 5 30 6 p.m. Yeah, life comes yeah, to, to a halt, a, a halt yeah. you know so I mean all these things 
Weather it's a, it's, is... It's a very serious thing. Absolutely. You know, you and, know um, if somebody is sick in the night, mm, what do we have to do? Mm, is it an issue of taking a torchlight and, you know, getting a lantern to mm, maneuver our way around stuff yeah. and all that? I think that is very, very important. Once we have people there, mm, certain mm. things are basic, like yeah. clean water, electricity, especially in, in this... Day and age. Day and age. I yeah, mean, yeah. we can't have people yeah. who don't have basic stuff like electricity, mm. clean water, mm. you know, and collectively it adds to our development level. Yeah. You know, because does. if you have just um, people in urban areas uh, who have access to some of these yeah. things, you, you tell, I mean, when you look at a nation's development, you measure by the people in their rural areas, mm. their quality mm. of life, you Absolutely. know, how they I do mean, for things. For me, I've always said it, you know, the weakest of us, the least of us. Um, that's the way we judge the progress of a nation, you know. Yeah. And our, our colleague who brought us that report, Mohammed Alabira, has joined us on the line. Uh, Elijah, good morning. Good morning. Yes, how are you this morning? I am doing well. All right, this is a bit of good news, isn't it? <coughs> Not a bit, mm. so much. Yeah. So, um, what do the? How do the residents? Few. I mean, I, I saw a, a comment in one, um, by one of the residents saying that ever since independence, they've lived in darkness the entire time. Does that mean that these communities actually existed at the time of independence, and then all this while they've not had power? Yes, uh, Alaji. What the what the person was trying to say is that look, uh, communities without light up north here is not. There, there are many. There are many. So mm. just, uh, like, when you see a community with that light, it's not new in this part of the country. Yeah. There are many communities since, since independence mm. that have never seen light before. Mm. And many of these communities were, were such communities. And this was the first time they are getting electricity. So the excitement was so much. We all, we all know the importance light will bring to us. The commonest one is, you know, this time more, everybody has mobile phones. So, the, where, uh, unlike in the past, where something happened and they will have to take, to send someone from one community to another, sometimes walking or riding a motorbike, but this time with full mobile phones, you easily sit there. If something happens, you can call. But if there is no light in your community, how do you charge your phone? Yeah. So, these are some of the things that. The, the women were, or the, the residents in the community were so excited about. How have they survived? I mean, things like chips compound, clinics, and all of that. How far did they have to travel to, 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 ha to access, um, you know, these facilities, um, you know, uh, until now? Yes, thank you. Okay, come, uh, with the coming of this light, it doesn't also mean that uh, these compounds have been provided for them. So they, they still have to travel long distances for these compounds. You know, they, when you look at these communities, the nearest these compounds, they, well, they, have, they just have to travel from their community to Chelpuli Town, mm. which, is be, which is very far, which is very far. We're, yes. talking, so, we're talking about how many, how, many, how many hours or how many minutes drive to, the, to Chelpuli? You know, these, these days, because uh, because of the introduction of this yellow, uh, the tricycle popularly called yellow yellow. Yeah. The, many of these yellow yellow tricycles usually travel to some of the communities. Okay. Or some communities have them, so if there is any emergency, they can easily call on them to bring them to the nearest uh, health facility. Mm. Then it will take them no less than two hours. Two hours. Yes, wow. Two hours. Wow. Yes. Wow, yes. wow. Yes. So wow. you can imagine if they, if they were to travel on their food. In fact, it, they would, it would take them the whole day to get to, 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 get to their community. Wow. Yes. So, it's, so, so for the 12 communities, it's actually a very big deal to have electricity um, installed there now. Yes. Mm. Yes. It was, it was, the excitement was, was too much. Well, so, for, especially for the women. I yeah. The women... Uh, you know, grinding milk, grinding their flour. Yeah. These days, they don't use the, uh, the, b b b b the local grinding milk. <laughs> that, you, uh, they use the electricity one. And it is those communities, it is communities that have electricity, that has the, those grinding milk. And mm. women have to travel long distances from those communities to Chelfuni town. And yeah. it, 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 it's something. 
Yeah. So the women were so excited that this time, maybe their men would also be able to buy those grand bills in their community so that they can, they can also, I mean, enjoy life more. So Another major challenge for them was water. As mm. for water, but... Uh, Hmm. What's, the, what's the situation with water? It's, uh, that one is more terrible. Mm. Yes, access to portable water is, is, is a serious challenge in mm. not in all and not only in these small communities, but in most communities. Carefully itself has a dam. Okay. But that dam, you know, last year uh, the empty went and dragged it. That the, the dam was. Or flooded, so water could, could not stay there. By this time, the, the dam was dry up. Mm. But the MP went and dragged it last two years. But the challenge, me, I, for me, I like it. I won't drink. I won't drink water from that dam. Wow. Because yes, the fact the town water when it rains, it carries everything from town to the dam. Okay. And that is why the people will also go and then fetch back to the community to, to, to drink. I yeah. would not drink water from, and this is the water that even the Cherpuli town, the district capital, this is the water they are depending on. Talk <laughs> less of the communities. As for the communities, no, water is a serious challenge, especially this time. Mm. And so they made an appeal that if uh, organizations will come to their help mm. by giving them whole food, that will, uh, I mean, ameliorate their suffering. Yeah. So do you know what it was that uh, uh, made the authorities decide to choose these 12 communities in particular at this time? What was it that informed the decision to bring power to these 12 communities at this time? Yes. Actually, uh, uh, from the MP, during this campaign talk in the, uh, in the lead of the 2012 election, many of these communities, when he visited them, these were the appeals they made, they, they made to him. Okay. They actually made the two appeals, the water and then the electricity. <clears throat> okay. That if the MP could come to their assistance with water and then electricity. Mm. So the, uh, to the MP, for now, this is the opportunity he has for them. So that is why he has extended this electricity to them for now. But this uh, uh, water is also a major challenge for them. Mm. All right. Thank you very much, um, Alaji. We've been speaking with our correspondent um, there in the northern region for, and that's uh, Mohammed M. Amino Alabira, and um, bringing us this very important update. Uh, Freema, I think that, like we just we said earlier, we need to be able to have in our developmental plan for the nation a decision that we make to say by, say, 2030, there should be no community yeah. that does not have access. But I think we had a plan when we went about the rural electrification project and all that, yeah, you so know, I don't, trying I mean, to do stuff. But you see, um, um, Alabira said something, mm. that there are no cheap compounds there. Yeah. Because you will factor in all these yes. before you site yes. some of these facilities yes. there, yes. all right? Yes. And so if they don't have basic things like portable um, water, they don't have um, electricity. Mm. When you even decide to bring a chips compound there, you ask yourself, so how are they going to even store some they of these things? Then you realize anything. that yeah. we can't There's bring no it there. So it. if, yeah. I mean, not having access to electricity it's, really would deprive the communities yeah. of a lot of- I mean, if you think of, about it, mechanized boreholes, they depend on electricity. Everything. <laughs> now, so now you know, when, when the lights go off, yeah. even in areas where there's power, when mm. the lights go off, you feel your life has come to a halt. Yeah. Because you can't even cook, you can't do uh, so. No, but even, if, even when you have water flowing in the area and you're using a pump that pumps water to the top floor, the pump will not work. That is what I'm no saying. If there's no electricity, just, everything ceases. Yeah. And you realize that you are, in a way, incapacitated. Yeah. There's so much you can't do. You yeah. can't even cook. You can't take a bath. You can't yeah. do so many things, yeah. you know. And then you sit down, watch everything you have in your fridge go bad and mm. all this. So mm. it, it tells you that per where we are today, yeah. electricity is very key C to, our to our everyday lives, yeah. lives you yeah. know. Water is very, very key. Absolutely. We have been joined on the line by Inusa, who is a resident of Tripoli. Inusa, good morning. Good morning. Uh, how are you? Welcome to Breakfast Daily this morning. How are you? I'm very well, and you? Very well, thank you. Now, talk to us about um, 
where exactly you live and uh, this news that has come of electricity coming into the communities around Chirponi. Okay, thank you very <coughs> much for the opportunity given. Um, I am in Akobla number one, precisely. Okay. That's my community, one okay. of the community that has benefited from this electricity. And since the day we were connected to the national grid, it has been a good news to my community. Mm. Everybody is happy, everybody chief and everybody. Because uh, Tripoli is a place that has this kind of problem. Okay. Many of the communities are there, they don't have electricity. And today, in this modern world, electricity does everything. Yeah. So when the MP in 2020, when he came around and he was campaigning for campaigning, we told him our problem. We told him we don't have water, we don't have electricity. But the MP saw it that, no, first of all, what I need to do is to try and make sure these communities are connected to the electricity first mm. before anything will be added. So when he, the note was given and he went to parliament, he pushed, and today my community has benefited yeah. from this electricity. Not only my community, a lot of community just on my on our way there. So it seems like um, finally things like chips compounds, uh, other health facilities, um, businesses, you know, maybe even water, uh, mechanized water, all these are now possible because you have electricity. How does that make you feel? Yeah. Hmm. That's why I said electricity is the beginning of everything. Hmm. Because with electricity, I think now we can have the chip compound where when they come, they will have the, uh, when they have some drugs or medicines, they will be stored in the fridges. Yeah. And then even if it is water, nowadays, the bag house, they dry up in the dry season. But when we mechanize the borehole with the use of electricity, I think it will help my community. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you very much, Inusa, for speaking to us and sharing with us the joy of the community members. And um, yeah, I, I, it just it, it just makes um, it's a good it's a good it's a good story, mm -hmm. a, a way to get into the week. You know, to say that there's still positive things happening, and that I think that for me, I want to say that let's go back to the drawing board mm -hmm. and make sure that let's look at the country as a whole and see. What are the gaps? Where are the lapses? Let's make sure that in the next maybe five to ten years max, you know, every place has access. You see, okay, for me, I think that it's very important that whatever our national development plan says, let's commit to it. Mm. Let's do it. Because I think that, you know, sometimes having to start off certain projects you know yeah. certain stuff that we promised ourselves we mm. promised people maybe we promised god you know yeah. are all <laughs> reasons why we are being um, um de delayed in some mm. of uh, mm. achieving what we want to do is some of the things that have kind of swayed us from real life issues yeah. developmental issues that we need to pay attention mm. to if it means that look we all need to tell ourselves that by, let's say, 2030, we don't want to see ABC, we don't want to see any community mm. um, without electricity, mm. we don't want to see Galamse, we don't want to see this. And let's start, you know, marking our leaders who come on this call, yeah. not yeah. on a premise of who has contracted more this and all that. It looks like, look, whatever we are doing does not really follow any kind of trajectory, mm. i.e., mm. um, this is where Ghana is heading towards. Yeah. And so we want to see who is committed to this cause. Mm. When you came into office, what did you achieve yeah. with this? You know, yeah. I think it's very important. As against, everyone comes and they decide that, okay, so for me, education is what is key to me. And then we, 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 we now move from everything we are doing, hmm. focus on education. Someone yeah. comes in and said that, look, Ask for me, I care about road networks. Mm. And then we stop whatever we've, we've started yeah. with education yeah. and then go to the road. So you realize that at all times, we are just crashing the surfaces. We never mm. get to solve one problem in its entirety yeah. because everybody has their own plans, their own mind. And at the end of the day, Ghanaians suffer. Mm. Mm. We're joined by John Akko, who is the assemblyman for Wanjuja, uh, electoral area in the Chiponi district. Uh, John, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing fine, and you? Very well, thank you. Welcome to Breakfast Daily. 
Now, share, share with us uh, the emotions of the community and um, what your hopes and aspirations are as an assemblyman, considering the power that has now come to your community. Uh, uh, yes, thank you for the question. Um, with the coming of this light in our communities, um, I think it's, it's some of them were put on on Thursday, others on Friday, and the euphoria has still been fresh as if it's today, mm. because the benefits have started trickling in. Mm. Um, for instance, the, I would say the local economy of the communities, uh, the women who usually will sell some things, uh, putting them in fridge, yeah. they are making arrangements to get bridges from family and other places to start some form of business. And then some other people are citing granny meals mm. for rice processing and also for our main stable food here, which is PZ, yeah. the flour. Yeah, so it's going to enhance the local economy of the place. Aside that, um, some of the places are having cheap compounds, the, like that of Yogu in my electoral area. Mm. But they do not have light. So they have to come like 12, 18 uh, kilometers to Wajuga to come and store their buttons. Hmm. And as and when they need them, they have to come by motorbike on a rough road to come pick them from the area council, which is in Wanjuga, um sub-district, to your goal to immunize the children. And so with the coming of the light, I think the health directory will do the needful, provide them with a freezer where they can keep these vaccines to do their work. Yeah. And I, I also believe that the health staff this time also stay there, because some of them now stay in Pani or Wanjuga, and then they... They, they, they go every now and then to the facility. Mm -hmm. So some of the times in the night, if there's an ailment, uh, that you may not find some of them there to do the work. But I believe that with the coming of the light, uh, they have accommodation attached to the facility, and so they will stay around to serve the people. Mm -hmm. And so these and many others are the reason why the euphoria is not ending around here. Mm -hmm. John, we appreciate your time. That's, that's very um, important submissions that you've made there. So mm -hmm. we were speaking with John Akko, who is the assemblyman for the one Juja electoral area in Chiponi district. And he said two, two things that caught my attention. One is that there's actually a chips compound, mm. but there's no power. So you go 12 plus kilometers away to go and store vaccines. And when you need them, you go and collect and you bring and come and use. By the time you travel and it's bring the car, crazy. it's exactly. You That's know, what we're doing in Ghana. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you know, know uh, Alabra earlier mentioned that if you want to access a proper clinic, you have mm. to drive like two hours. Two hours yeah. So it means that you yeah. living in Accra yeah. and going to hospital all the way in, let's say, in Koko. Sugar for free. <laughs> no, do you get it? Yeah. You will be dead by yeah. the time you get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is our state. Yeah. You know? And so for me, I think that really, we really need to come together as a people mm. and have a proper plan mm. that we will follow. If only we can stop partisanship of everything, everything you know, which is yeah. impeding our own mm. development. Mm. Mm. And so if this person, if David comes, David doesn't want to touch um, this mug because if you touch it, we are going to say that, ah, but this is pretty much mug that yeah. you are washing. So why are you washing it? Yeah. So you would want to go and buy your own mug, mm. buy your own soup, buy your own water. By the time yeah. you are done that whole thing, yeah. you realize that you don't even have money for a sponge. Yeah. Yeah. And so we are stuck. Mm. The, 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 the mug is dirty. Mm. We've bought soup. We've bought certain things, but we can't even use mm. them mm. because one basic thing we need to complete the whole puzzle is off. Yeah. And this is why we have challenges. Yeah. Look, if we don't have a clear roadmap, i.e. this is the, the, the route we are towing, mm. we'll always come back running around in circle. Yeah. This person comes, I want to focus on religion. The other person comes, I want to focus on tourism. Another yeah. person comes, I want to focus on education. Mm. So look, everybody comes in with their own personal yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, decisions and what they think mm. they want to do to help Ghana. Yeah. It, it probably will all come from a very good place. Mm. By the end of the day, are we achieving anything at yeah, all? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think that um, enough, 
enough said. Um, you know, we've been we've been able to um, come up with a national development plan. Why is it that um, we've not been able to stick to it? You know. Mm. Yeah. Right now, I've been joined by the MP of Tripone, the Honorable Abdul Razak Tahidi. Thank you very much for your time, Honorable. Thank you. Well, um, right now, this is some welcoming news coming to um, residents of Tripone. How easy or difficult was it to lead this call? Right now, this is some welcoming news coming to residents of Tripone. How easy or difficult was it to lead this Thank you so much, and thank you to the city. TV and our cherished listeners of your media. Yeah, I know it has not been easy to overcome this through your communities. Uh, before I, I move ahead, let me use this opportunity again to let you know that uh, Cheropony comprises of 182 rural communities. Okay. I was I was once the DC for Chiropuni, 2017 to 2020, and during that tenure, I had connected about the 30 communities to the national grid. Before this time around, we are connecting also 12. Actually, I would say that it has not been easy because when you look at it, about 182 communities and uh, a lot. We still have a lot of outstanding communities to be connected to the national grid. As we speak, I think the Minister of Education, the Minister of Health, with the support of the supervisors, have come around all communities in the Chirponi district to do survey and estimate which report has been submitted. But a difficult has to do with the funding. Somewhere last session, I think a, 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 a loan agreement was presented before Parliament for approval so that they can do more extension within Ghana and the nation at large. So I'm hoping and praying that by the time this loan agreement is through, most of the outstanding communities will also benefit. Because now that we have inaugurated these 12 communities, the pressure on me is very high. Every morning, the communities who are not yet hooked to the national grid are in my house asking when, when are they going to be connected to the national grid. Hmm. So this is the challenge I'm going through. Well, I, I, I believe that um, you are going through this because you are their leader and you are their representative. And so they want to believe that you are closer to authority. Now, just paint a clearer picture to us. How was life, you know, um, prior to being connected to the national grid, how was not having electricity in these areas affecting the quality of life of residents? Yeah, to be frank, life in those communities were very bad. For example, yes, the, on Friday we went to Yogo. Yogo is a large community closer to northern Togo. And we have only a cheap compound there. And the distance from Cheropony town to Yogo is not easy. And the road network too is very bad. So sometimes when they are attended, when they attend to a hospital or they attend to cheap compound and there are referral cases, they find it very difficult because most of the issues, they need like to do one or two things for our patients at those communities, but where? Two, our students in those communities need life to study. And to be frank, when we connected the community to the National Grid on Friday, students there came out, even primary school students, and they were excited because this time around, it will improve their learning habits in the community. Fortunately, I met a nurse who was on duty, who quickly said, Honorable, now you've given us light. We'll be able to stay in the community to help your people. But our difficult challenge now should be water, if you can get water and out to us in this community. That is your goal. Then when you take the stretch of Akomabla, Quinchi, Ngandli, Akomabla number two, and then 
uh, angle. They are also one line, one stream community. For them to be frank, they have no cheap compounds. But their road is somehow accessible. And they can access only health facility in Chirponi town. So, Honorable, is there, is there a plan, okay, to say that, let's say, um, in the next two, three, four years, we'll make sure that every community in Chirponi is connected to the national grid? Is there any plan like that? Yes, madam. The plans, as I mentioned, all communities in Chiropuni now have been, the supervisors have gone around all communities in Chiropuni. They've taken measurements and then quantities have been taken, reports have been submitted to I, I got Minister, that. Minister I got, of I, Energy. I got that, but I want to know if there are any timelines to go with these. Uh, yes, because as and when I'm in Parliament, or any time I'm in Accra, I continue to go to the ministry to push for more communities to be hooked to the national grid. For that one, I, I, I make those follow up. But, but Even you last session, I, I need to ask questions at the floor of Parliament regarding some of the communities that are not yet hooked to the national grid. Super. And my answer was that they were having financial challenges or difficulties All right. at so, that time. So as a stance now, we just have to wait till the nation has money to embark on some of these projects. And so we can't confidently say that, let's say, in that, two years' that, time. That, uh, let's say, that is true. And some of the communities that are not so big and large, sometimes I use my personal resources to connect for them. Because before 2020 election, I used my personal resources to connect two communities before the elections. Well, so I'm the sure. communities that are not so large, sometimes... Because I have some, some of the electricity pools. Now, my challenge has to do with buying of the other electrical equipment, which are so costly. All right. I'm sure your people appreciate you for that. But um, can we also look at the issue of water? Is there anything really being done to bring them potable water? Yeah, thank you, madam. Water was one of my priority when I became a member of parliament. Because unfortunately, a contractor disappointed us in the district, but we have been able to terminate that contract. Because in the interim, when I came into office, I was thinking that each quarter, or each, quarter, each year, I'm going to use my common fund to drill 25. So that by the end of four years, I would have drilled 100 more holes. And what has but happened? when we started at a point, uh -huh. the cost of boreholes continue increasing. Mm. So last year, the contractor only came and drilled five. And at, we saw at, that. At, at what cost? How much was one? At, at, at the time I engaged him, he was more or less a contractor and a philanthropist. By that time, he said he was drilled for me at 8,000 Ghana cities per okay. borehole. Okay? Mm -hmm. So. When things became tough and harder, I think he, he was not open to us that he would not be able to drill at that cost again. Mm. So finally, he only came and drilled five and left. So this year, we've terminated the contract, and now we are awarding a borehole at 23,000 Ghana cities. Wow. Hmm. Hopefully, 22nd of this month, the new contractor will be giving his award letter to start the drilling. 22nd is Saturday? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. So, so I, I hope Friday, he'll pick the letter by Friday, which will be on 21st, then 22nd, 23rd, he could start the drilling. Fortunately, okay. the Petroleum Commission has also supported us with the 20 boreholes, mm -hmm. of right. which also in the making, maybe we will possibly add it to that contractor to drill for us. Because the Petroleum Commission one day, as at that time, was sourced at 16,500 mm. Ghana cities. Mm. But have you also tried, you know, mobilizing um, people who are well-to-do, who come from your area, you know, just so they can also come and help? Yes, I've tried once, madam, but have not 
have not relaxed my effort. I will continue pushing for other philanthropists to see how they can help us. And even if you are happy, I'm still pleading with your outfit. If you have other philanthropists that you can direct, direct me to reach them or direct them to come to Chiropoli to give us some portable water, we we'll appreciate that. Well, I guess as a media house, what we can do is what we are doing now. Give you the platform, you know, to tell your story. Okay. Right, Honorable, thank you very much. Um, for the electricity, as you've mentioned, we just have to wait till the, com the, the country has money to proceed. But with the water, we will probably reach you sometime next week to say if the contractor, the new contractor, has started work. Thank you very much, Honorable Tahidu. Okay. Right. So this is where we are. I mean, mm -hmm. he's been just very honest yeah. with us. There's yeah. no money, and um, I don't think that we need a stranger to come tell us this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, it's a tough one. Um, I think that priorities is again back to priorities. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what what do we what do we value and prioritize as a people? Um, you know, these areas also that we're talking about. The journey is two and two hours plus from some of the communities to Tripoli, simply because um, not only by the physical distance, mm -hmm. but the roads are also terrible. Yeah. You know, the roads are terrible. So then I, w I keep asking myself, so when will we fix all these challenges, you know? You go to certain places, yes, and there's no way in the world that there's, no, there's zero problems, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but some of the things are quite basic. Yes. You know, to human yes. existence. Absolutely. To, decency of living i mean you would think that, that by 2023 there are certain things that we shouldn't even be discussing yeah. but well it, i guess that's what basic. makes us a yeah. developing country mm, mm, mm. Yeah. i know 